G'day, I'm Jason Edwards. Welcome to Snap Happy, the photography show. And I'm Maddie Claire Sloan. This week, we meet a young, award-winning wedding photographer from the Gold Coast. He'll show us what's in his kit and give us some tips on how to avoid the wedding faux pas. And I meet an interior designer who helps me out with decorating my house with some prints. All this and more coming up on Snap Happy, the photography show. The wedding would have to be the most photographed event across Australia. Today we are going to meet a young multi-award winning photographer who captures the big day for couples right around the world. So let's go meet him. I'm Ryan Chimbury, I'm a wedding photographer from the Gold Coast. So how did you get started with photography? My dad was a wedding photographer and has been for the last 35 years. So. Now, you are, I did have a stalk. Okay, <laughs> good. <laughs> the youngest master of photography with AIPP. How did that come about? The AIPP have a competition every year. Mm -hmm. uh, it's called the APRA Awards, the Australian Professional Photography Awards. Yep. And uh, so through entering those awards, you collect points mm -hmm. to becoming a master. And it takes people about 10 or 15 years to get their whole thing done. Um, I got it done a little bit quicker and became in, the youngest one. In how many years <laughs> instead of 10 or 15? Well, I was 21. So. 21, wow. Yeah. So did you always know you wanted to get into photography? Uh, not always knew. Mm -hmm. um, felt like it was something that I was good at yep. and thought I should pursue it. But uh, I, I, th I always thought I was going to be a soccer star. But <laughs> Didn't, didn't pan out. There's still time. There's still <laughs> time's running out on that one. <laughs> now, I've had a look at some of your photos, and there's some gorgeous locations that you shot at. Do you have any standout location that's your absolute favourite? Oh, that's a hard one. Um, yeah, I've shot in some amazing, amazing spots. Uh, Barcelona would have to be one. Oh, beautiful. Yeah, and probably Buenos Aires um, was oh, the other. Amazing. Yeah. Now, do you have a perfect time of the day to shoot? No. No, not at all. No. Have you ever shot at night time? Absolutely. Yeah. Love it. Love Gorgeous. it. Anything that gives me a little bit of interest. So just anything that's different, any time of day, I'll, I'll just use the light to my best advantage. Wonderful. It's going to be a bit of a hard job that you do have, but do you have any bridezilla moments that you can tell me about? <laughs> um, ones that should be on camera or not? Mm, um, you can well, tell us. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I've got to admit, my, my clients are, are, are pretty beautiful in, yep. in every aspect. Um, I guess what turns a bridezilla is all the stress and, and yeah. the stress of a wedding. So I, I find my job as a wedding photographer is almost like a counsellor on the day. I've yep. got to calm everyone down and <laughs> just relax the moments and uh, and we go from there. But no, I haven't had a freak out bridezilla moment yet. That's good. You're lucky. I am. <laughs> You're very am. lucky. Now, what makes your photography different? I think it's my my use of light, first okay. and foremost. Um, that's the most important part of photography. And if you think about the word photography, that's what photo is yeah. Greek for light. So um, it's the use of light and making light different. And then turning, I guess, my wedding photographs more into art pieces than just yeah. your standard wedding photo. We're at a place called Horsley Homestead. Uh, it's a privately owned property um, that hires out the venue for wedding location uh, shoots that happen. I've been coming here since I was a kid. Uh, my dad uh, brought me here as an apprentice, so it's been a long time since I've been here, but beautiful to come back. He's amazing, he's just really calming. You don't have to think about what you're doing. He makes it very natural yeah. for you. We're just trusting in what he wants to do and take us on the journey. Yeah, very, so Very laid back, calm, yeah. professional. Uh, not concerned at all, just putting my trust in him, which I've got 100%. I've now got all of my family shots. I've got a formal shot of the bridal party. I've got the formal shot of the two of them. Um, and then just at the end there, we just had a bit of fun, relaxed it a little bit, which was nice. But now I know that all the formalities are done. I can do anything I want now. So it's, it's sort of like open slather, if you like. So um, it's just knowing that you've got all those key shots nailed. Now, do you have any tips for anyone who wants to get into photography and become a wedding photographer? Don't? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, hire me. <laughs> I guess uh, the only tips I've got is you've got to be really passionate about it. Weddings yeah. is one of those things that you have to have passion for. If you leave home going to a wedding and you don't have passion for that that wedding that day, you just won't do the job properly. Yeah. Um, a wedding is something that you can't go back and do. So know your equipment, know your light, know how to pose people, know how to interact with people. And uh, and that's that's what being a wedding photographer is all about. So you are a low pro ambassador. How did that come about? I've been using Lowepro for my entire career. Uh, it was in fact the first camera bag my dad gave me when I was 15. Wonderful. Uh, so for me, Lowepro and having the Lowepro products for my, for my camera equipment, it's all about trust. It's all about knowing that my equipment stays safe. Um, so Lowepro will be the camera bags that I use forever. Now, one last question. Sure. Why weddings? Why did you choose weddings? 
the challenge. The challenge. The challenge. Good answer. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. It's something that, again, it's all happening in one day yeah. at one moment within a constraint time, and, yeah. uh, and it's the challenge. I love it. So. Wonderful. Yeah. Thanks so much for chatting. No problem. Absolutely. Thank you. Wolfgang Glowacki is a landscape photographer that has captured some stunning macro images in the Tasmanian wilderness. We asked him to give us some tips we can use on our smartphone cameras. I like to tend to look at things, you know, as a whole. So you've got a grand landscape, but then there's, when you start breaking it down, there's lots and lots of little components to it. And to me, sometimes the art really is in, in the finer details of things. And so something like, you know, these banksia flowers, which, you know, we've had a fair bit of rain today. You can see they're quite wet. are just perfect for, for doing macro work. And lots of little rain drops on them. Absolutely perfect. So yeah. go out having a shot. Yeah, for sure. One of the things too, I think, is interesting, especially with uh, with flowers that if you come at them from a variety of directions, suddenly they become almost abstract. You don't realise that that's the same flower. Absolutely. I mean, Manxia flowers in their different stages of opening um, have lots of different patterns in them. And I think one of the great ones too is when they're nearly fully developed where the seeds are coming out here. If you take a photo from the top looking down, they're actually really quite abstract. Back in the day, it took a lot more than an iPhone to capture that shot. Absolutely. You know, it was a macro lens that had to be tripoded and all of these sorts of things. I mean, the modern technology that you have, you know, in the palm of your hand with a phone and, or even just a small compact camera, it, it enables you to do so much more these days. It's wonderful. Yeah. There's a lot you can do to an image in post-production, but there are just some things that you can't achieve without a corrective filter on the lens. Today I'm road testing the Koken Creative Filter System. The Koken system offers dozens of creative filters, such as a polarizer, diffuser, star, and neutral density filters. But the ones that can be most useful in landscape photography are the graduated filters. I'm on the shores of Dove Lake, the famous Tasmanian weather has decided to close in on me. That's okay, but it creates a little bit of a problem between the exposure in the sky and the exposure here on the land and on the lake. So I'm using a Koken graduated grey filter set to even out my exposure. You can see here that the glass at the top is a little bit smoky and it's clear at the bottom. And that just levels things out for me and makes the scene look the way my eyes would see it. Graduated filters also come in a variety of colours, including graduated blue, tobacco or sunset. These filters can be used to add colour and interest to an otherwise bland sky. The Koken Creative Filter System is available in four sizes, so that it can be used on a small compact camera and right up to a large format camera. The filter holder can rotate on the lens and be stacked with multiple filters giving you more creative control over your shot. If you're looking for more control or creativity in your photography, why not try out the Koken Creative Filter System? I'm here with Ryan Chembury, a professional wedding photographer from the Gold Coast. Hi, Ryan. Hi. <laughs> now, is there any hints and tips you can give me to take a good photo at a wedding? Sure. Yeah. Well, number one, uh, you should probably stand on the photographer's way. Yeah. That'll be a, that'll be a good start. Have you got any funny stories you can tell me? I have. Well, you know, we are in a church today, and it's actually yep. funny that we're in a church because this is probably where the faux pas happen most. Yeah. Um, and probably one of the ones that really get on my nerves a little bit is the whole lean into the aisle. Oh. Yeah. Has anyone even knocked you over? Well, not so much knocked me over, <laughs> but I have had up to 10 smartphones being stuck out into the aisle. Oh, wow. As I'm trying to photograph the bride and groom <laughs> down the aisle back to the church. How so. do you nicely say, can you just pick out of the way, please? I'm always able to get my shot, but yep. just being cautious of where you are and, and where you're sticking that selfie stick. At the wedding reception, mm -hmm. has there any been jumping out, anyone over your shoulder taking a photo? I think the, the whole media scrum is, yep. is, a, is a great way to describe what happens <laughs> at, a, at a wedding. You know, everyone is you know, up to 200, 300 people there, yep. and there's probably up to 150 iPhones and smartphones out photographing the, the bridal party. Now, has anyone ever asked you to take a photo with the iPhone? Oh, several times. <laughs> yeah. And trust me, I'm no better at it than anyone else. Uh, but yes, you know, that has happened through our group shots. And yeah. I'm taking group shots on my professional camera. <laughs> and someone, you know, hands me their smartphone and says, would you mind? And you say, that is okay, give me the iPhone. I can do it. I can do it. I'm sure it's that big button right at the bottom. Yeah. <laughs> 
I'm in the heart of downtown Melbourne and behind me is Michael's camera video digital. The Michael family has operated their business there for almost a century. My great great grandfather started here in 1916 or built this building in 1916 and he actually wasn't a camera vendor then, he was a, um, a pawnbroker and gunsmith. <laughs> so we have changed a fair bit. In 75, which is already a long time ago, um, we became cameras only, not cameras and pharmacy, and uh, we've grown ever since. Since its humble beginnings, Michaels has grown to offer a wide range of services, including sales, rentals, servicing, training, and film processing. But today it was the museum that caught my attention. Now this is something, isn't it? Look at this. I think, uh, I think there is pretty much everything here I've ever dreamed of. Stepping into the Michaels Camera Museum for me is like stepping into the tomb of King Tutankhamun. With over 2,000 items on display, there are so many hidden gems and some absolutely fascinating items on display. This is called the Yashica Electro 35. It um, is unique because it's the very first camera that was battery driven. All the other cameras are mechanically driven, therefore they're relying on springs and springs wear. So with the advent of electronic cameras or electronic shutters, all of a sudden accuracy came in. So the timing was never an issue. So Peter, these days lighting our photographs seems so simple, but it wasn't always the case. You're quite right, we take it all for granted how easy lighting is. When I was a kid, we um, used these flash bulbs. So this mm. is one bulb you'd pop in the camera or you'd pop in the flash gun, um, take the shot and then each shot you'd have to replace that bulb. Mm. And then we've got, so we've got two colours here. One is colour balance for colour film, which is a blue one. Mm -hmm. And the clear one is for black and white. The larger the globe, the more the power. And again, even though it's so large, that's one shot. One shot. Yeah. So they developed and they came out with this great idea called a flash cube. And when you take a shot, when you wind the shot on, the flash cube turns around and all of a sudden you've got, instead of having to change each shot, mm -hmm. you take four shots. Yes. There was one item I was really keen to get my hands on. This is a, uh, they call a machine gun camera. Uh, it's used by the Japanese Imperial Navy. And what it is, is it's about the size and weight of a true machine gun. <laughs> and weird. how they would use it, instead of when they're doing their, when they're doing their uh, machine gun training and practice, instead of shooting bullets, they'd take photos and then develop the film and see how accurate the shots were. I mean, I've used some pretty heavy lenses in my day, but I cannot imagine, you know, sort of going on assignment with this. That's it's, right. uh, it is crazy time. I mean, look at that. Entry to the Michaels Museum is free and it's open seven days a week. Every time I come here, I see something new. So be sure to check it out. Ryan Chembury, I'm a wedding photographer from the Gold Coast, and this is what's in my kit. My main bodies are a Canon 1DX camera. Uh, I have two of these, and why I have two is basically I like to shoot both long and wide at the same time. So I'll have one of these with a 70 to 200 uh, 2.8 lens, which is a Mark II version. Uh, that'll be one, on one camera body. On the other camera body, which is exactly the same camera body, same settings. I'll have a 16 to 35 mil lens. Um, and then I have my alternate lenses, uh, which help me throughout the day just to be able to create different looks of images. And, and why I have those is because one of them is an 85 1.2. Allowing me to shoot down at 1.2 gives me that beautiful bokeh in the background and just creates that different sort of mood in my images. The other lens that I use as an alternate lens is 100 mm macro. And the, the macro is important, not only for macro detail shots, uh, but for portraiture. And I'm a big fan of shooting a lot of reflections and anything that I can shoot through glass or reflection, I shoot with 100 mm macro. Uh, it's an incredibly sharp lens. I think it's the sharpest lens that Canon make. 
standard things to have a flash. So flash is always important. I'm not the biggest user of a flash. And if I ever use my flash, it's always off camera. The other sort of lighting that I have is LED or continuous lighting. The ice light is a cylindrical light that mimics what a window light would do. So cylindrical in form, uh, but if I was to hold it next to someone, it would mimic what a window or what a window light would appear like. So completely dimmable up to nine stops. So in terms of which camera bag I prefer to use is the, the Lowepro Pro Roller X100, the AW, the all weather version. Um, and why I use this bag is, as you can see, it fits all of my equipment in there really quite snug. Um, I travel a lot and why I use the X100 is because it fits in overhead compartments. Um, the beauty about having the roller is the roller blade wheels on this are just amazing. It takes all the weight off my shoulders. The other thing that I really love about this bag is it holds everything really beautifully in there. In the front, I have more pockets that I can hold things in. This front pocket's really great if I'm out and about and I just want to throw either my phone or my wallet in there. And then I have a slip in here as well, which actually holds my 13 inch MacBook Pro uh, perfectly. All of the X, X series are, are amazing, but the X100 fitting in that overhead compartment is why I choose to use this one. My name is Ryan Chembury and that's what's in my kit. With all the home improvement shows on TV at the moment, it's easy for us to be inspired to want to redecorate and upgrade our homes. I really want to put some photos on my walls, but I'm not too sure where to start. I've met up with James Treble, professional home decorator, for some tips. I'm interior design expert on the living room on Channel 10, so I've been on that show now for four seasons. We're about to start season five. Awesome. I also have my own interior design practice, which I've been uh, running now for about 14 years, yep. and I've been in the building and design industry for over 20 years, so I basically <laughs> love houses. <laughs> Well, that's awesome for me because I want to decorate my house with some prints, but I have no idea where to start. Look, prints are great because these days we live in a digital world. We yep. get to make our own work and have our own artwork on the walls. People do make a mistake though. They try to fill too much in one wall. Yeah, I think that people uh, worry too much about colour and where to place things. So there are a few simple ways that you can use prints throughout the house, yep. making it your own, but um, not making it feel like you're in a photography shop or in a gallery, because yeah. it's a home. Yeah, of course. We are at a home in Western Sydney. Its walls are a blank canvas, and James has given me some tips for decorating some of the key living spaces. All right, James, we're at the entrance of the home now. What have we done here? Well, look, I wanted to uh, show you how you can use the family photographs yeah. in a nice, interesting way. You can walk past them, you want to engage with them. They look beautiful, yeah. but I don't have to stare at them while I'm having dinner. So I've noticed these are glass here. They're great because there's no framing, yep. so there's no heavy detail. And there's also a nice little shadow effect on the wall. It's another dynamic for the photo. And as you can see, that beautiful group of three down the hallway leads us down into the rest of the house. Let's go take a look. All right, we've got this wall. What are we going to do with it? Well, it's always important to try to read the room. Yep. So I've actually got a room here with two windows, one very large. Yep. The ceilings here are quite high, so I'm happy to push the artwork up a bit. I'm going to use a series of four, so a nice grid. But when I hang it, you keep it in a line as if it's one large artwork. Okay. How did you choose which one went where? Sometimes it's a little bit of trial and error. Yeah. Have a bit of fun, you know. It is photography, you want to enjoy what you're looking at. My jumping off point was the kookaburra. I wanted him up high and it's beautiful because he's looking to the right anyway, looking yeah. into the rest of the room. And then I just wanted to make sure that I had construction, construction, so there was yeah. two prints with stone in it and I wanted one there and there. So I think it's just a nice even balance. And again, the importance of that blank space around it. Let, let, let the artwork be important, give it breath. Yep. So this is our centerpiece. It's the centrepiece. It's one big work because we've got the dining room here. Yeah. It's nice because it looks into the lounge room and you can see our other pieces there, so mm -hmm. they definitely talk to each other. A good thing to remember for artwork for height is roughly your eye level okay. is one third down. Right. So it means that the, the artwork sits comfortably in the room. Now black and white, would that work here do you think? It will work, yeah. but we've got another black and white of this exact okay. print, so I think we should see what it looks yeah, like. Yeah, let's go check it out. What do you think? I prefer the colour. I love black and white. Yeah, see? Personal opinion there. <laughs> <laughs> Look, it's a personal choice, there's yeah. no right or wrong. I think wrong. if I had it here for a couple of days, I'd love the black and white, but seeing them one after another, I've gone, oh, I think I like the colour. Yeah, so yeah. it's a good trick, you know, with your photography. These yeah. days it's all digital. You can play with it and see if you like it black or white or, or in colour. And um, it's all about bringing your prints into the home. Or you can just get two prints like we did. <laughs> <laughs> so we've scattered the photos. 
Well, I think it's nice to be yeah. free and easy here. It's a child's bedroom, it's playful. Yeah. And by having them at different heights, you can just be playful. Yeah. They're beautiful shots. And as your little baby grows, they're gonna look at photos of mum and dad and grandma and grandpa and also of themselves in funky yeah. glasses. It's a fun way to um, display photography. Yeah. Also, they grow very fast. You know, my two are like this now. Mm -hmm. So by changing them, you can replace them as they get older. Great for a bedroom. I don't like them in a living area, but that's up to you. Yeah. Well, we've seen so many different types of canvases, the glass, mm -hmm. photo blocks as well. The photo blocks I love because they're a little bit of a modern play on a picture yeah. frame. You can put them by the bed, put them on the kitchen bench, move them around on a buffet or a console. They're a nice playful thing and they're also probably the best thing to send overseas or to give as a gift. All the prints that we are using today were made by me on the Snapfish website. They offer a wide range of customizable products such as print enlargements, canvases, glass and photo block prints. I really have been inspired today and I can't wait to get home and redecorate my walls. Thanks for joining us on the show. And don't forget, if you want to be part of the Snap Happy community, head on over and join our mailing list at snaphappytv.com for exclusive content, competitions and offers from our partners. See you next time on Snap Happy, the photography show.